Hi everyone, this is ARA Productions and welcome to a brand new video. So I uh, got something interesting to show you guys. Uh, this right here is a little project I've been working on, me, myself and Second Plex Guy. Um, so basically this is a demo fire suppression system that him and I um, got recently. Um, so I will walk you guys through it. So this right here is the control panel. It is a Siemens CP-2ER. It is a two zone um, conventional panel. Uh, this one's dated, I think for 2009. So it's fairly new system. Um, it is down to three troubles right now. Um, right now it just has a battery trouble and I just need to get a resistor for the releasing circuit for where the bottle was connected. Um, so kind of walking through the devices for a manual release pull station, we have a Siemens MH501 manual release station. Um, now everything that's here is original to the system except for this but i'll get into that in a minute um so the way that it was set up there was six smoke detectors three photoelectric and three ion so if we pull this off this is a siemens pe11 conventional photoelectric smoke detector just trying to get this back on there's wire nuts behind it for the resistor so um, right here is a Siemens DI-3 um, ionization smoke detector. This thing is a really old design, but this one's from 2009. So it's like a fairly recent model, or I'm sorry, 2008. So 08, 2008. So the way that this wires is um, terminal 1A is your, po in, your positive in, 5 is your positive out, or your positive in and your out, um, 1B is your positive out, um, and then 6 is your enunciator contact. But as you can see, I have it resistored like that because there's only one detector on the zone. Um, going into the devices we have, we have, what's the model of it? It is a Siemens MTHMCR-AR. It's essentially just a newer Wheelock MT. Um, it says agent on it, as you can see. Um, right here we have a, I don't know the Siemens model number. Um, I think it's like an MBC, MBDC-6, but the, I know the wheel lock model number is a wheel lock MBG624R. Uh, and then right here we have a uh, uh, Siemens branded wheel lock ZRS. So originally, the horn strobe that was for being used for pre-discharge was this Wheelock ZNS or whatever the model is for Siemens, um, ZH something. Um, but I ended up putting the MT on here because I think it's a little more fitting. So essentially the way that the system works is there are three stages. Oh, also there's this abort switch right here. Um, I don't know the model of it, but it's just a standard Siemens abort switch. Um, so the way the system works is um, one detector will activate and then it will trip the uh, general alarm bell. That's right there. Another detector will activate. It'll shut that bell off and then put the horn strobe into a kind of March time style code. Um, and then once the pre-discharge timer has run out, it'll put the horn in continuous and then flash this discharge strobe to let you know that the system would be dumping uh, the FM200 that was originally connected to it. Um, so let me so just let's see where is the switch so um right here that is the dial for how to set the pre-discharge timer so we have it set just for 10 seconds right now because um i am outside in my backyard right now so i don't want these to be going off for too too long um but um so we're going to test the two detectors and then we'll test the uh, manual release station after that. So let, let's start with the DI3. Now, even though this detector is ionization, it has very high sensitivity. So it goes off almost instantly. And this one takes a little longer to activate. So here we go. See, we have oh, the, other, the other thing activated. It's 
not expecting that, but bolt detector is activated. Um, so, as you could see, the bell went off for the first alarm, then the horn strobe went off in a pre-discharged fashion, and then went into a continuous uh, tone once the discharge came on. And as you can see, that strobe is hooked up. The strobe is hooked up to the discharge circuit right there, um, and it'll continue to flash until it is powered off. Um, this abort button doesn't work because the system's already discharged. So I'll demonstrate how it would work if there, uh, you would actually want to use the abort. Reset the system. Up, oh, that's all on silence. There we go. System's reset. And are these going to reactivate? Maybe. Not the best sounding bell. Okay, hold this abort button and it shows that the discharge light stops. So it will interrupt the discharge um, until you let go of the button. And then just the way that this is configured, um, it's set up so that once the button is released, it will restart the discharge counter. So we're gonna let go and then it will go into back into pre-discharge and then discharge. So you can see that's how that works. <sighs> Okay, now we'll do a system reset. So now we're going to demonstrate the manual release station. Now the way that this um, works is it's not like the standard zone. It essentially is just like a normally open contact. And um, until it, it, basically the way that it works is it will keep the horns going off until it is reset. And even if you leave the panel, um, if you silence the panel and reactivate this, it'll go off again. So let's demonstrate it. As you can see, the discharge circuit is still active. Now you can set this up to have a delay on the pre-discharge, but it's kind of, um, Depending on where you're at and your what your local um, authority having jurisdiction says, um, see it goes back off. Um, but what depending on what your local AHJ says, um, they may or may not want the uh, manual release to have a delay on it. I've worked on a system where um, it just bypassed the um, delay and put it immediately into pre-discharge, but. Um, I think that's probably a good idea because even though these pulsations are located at exits um, of the protected area, the, the gas would dump immediately. So um, it's like an instant thing. So that's basically it for the system. Um, it's probably not going to change too often. Um, I might maybe switch out that for that ZNS um, maybe because that's just the original configuration it was in. Um, but this is basically just going to be how this is going to be. The plan is that there was another discharge uh, pulsation that I'm going to be adding to this. And then there's a, I have to get a special box for the support switch because as you can see it's not mounted correctly, but I just had to make do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this demo system and I'll see you guys later.